Some tough subjects are discussed in this episode, and if you're affected by any of this, there are some organisations listed in our show notes who can help. In it, this is good. This is cool, man. In it. So we're so excited to be here. It's our first ever live recording of Life After Prison, the sit down, isn't it, Jules? Woo! <laughs> Um, okay, so as you lovely lot know, this is a podcast where we have in-depth conversations with people um, about the criminal justice system, um, with people, yeah, who have been there themselves and know it firsthand. Yeah. And the sit-down wouldn't be the sit-down unless we are joined by an incredible guest each episode. Yes. And yeah, today is no different. No different. So, ladies and gentlemen, our guest today has been described as a one of one by Clara Amfo a storyteller by ID Magazine, and a part radical punk poet, part party starter by Clash. He's recently been supported by BBC Six Music, Radio One and Radio Two. Give it up for Hack Baker. Hack Baker in the house. Yes, my guy, have a seat, man. Yeah, yeah. Have a seat, have a seat. Make yourself at home. Oh, I will. You got some water down there if you want. Oh, that must be early. <laughs> <laughs> how you doing, my brother? I'm okay, how are you, brother? Fine, thanks. You want to bring that down just a little piece? Yeah. No problem. There we go, yeah. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, man. How you feeling? Feeling good? Yeah, I'm good. You know what? Good, good. So we're going to go straight into it, yeah? Like life, life hasn't always been like this way for you, you know. Um, you've had to learn how to uh, play the guitar mm-hmm. whilst you were inside, right? That's so where it started. Yeah. Well, tell us the story of how you picked up the, the guitar whilst you was doing some time. Um, so I was from the wingers normal, and the governor came in in the morning, and he was like, "Oh, this guitar lesson available. Are you interested?" He was like a rafter kind of thing. I put names in the app. And uh, my name got pulled out of the act, so then that was that. It was a bit of a coincidence, really. And then, um, so this geezer used to come into the prison on a fortnightly and give us like a two hour listen. And that happened about six, seven times. And anything that's decent in prison, they're discontinuing, not they say, we've got enough fathers. You know true. how it goes, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. So they discontinued it. And then I just had this um, guitar in my cell. A lot. And uh, I just used to play it as much as I could to the best of my ability, but I always looked, I used to sit in my cell bed and stare at it, and I used to think, I'm going to do something with you That's eventually. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I remember there was a prisoner in the wing that was trying to teach me like, how to do bar chords and things and whatnot. But yeah, I just it was just there. It was like, I didn't always play it, but as I said, I'd use it like as, I'd just stare at it. And say one day, and uh, I came out, and it took me a while really, because I just, you know, it goes sometimes you just, even after being in prison for years or whatnot, you still just kind of gravitate to not probably the most best of things. Yeah. Until I um, just had a moment like, oh, it was a woman, and she was like, what are you doing? And I was like, she's like, what do you want to do? I said, do you want to know what I want to do? She's like, what? She was a stripper. I was going to have a stripper at okay. the time. Yeah. So you wanted a story, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. and, uh, yeah, and then she was really cool. And she was like, you can do whatever you want. And I was like, I want to play guitar. She said, how are you going to do that? You even got a bank account. You can't even order one. Do you know what I mean? So she ordered me one. And then. Um, Saying you never look back. No. <laughs> well, I just Big started her playing. Up, Big her up, um, yeah. Big her up. She's Anti. from South as well. Big okay. her up. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's actually crazy to think that <clears throat> there was you were just staring at the guitar and not knowing that you, I'm guessing you didn't know how to play it. No, I'm not and sure. And now I mean I mean I've heard you play and it's just crazy to think, yeah, now you're like you're pro. No, <laughs> not at all, like because I still don't know like if you are To me, you're yeah. pro. <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't do that. You doing some Carlos Santana stuff. Yeah, it was I? crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I think what I'm going on to even though is it's like, you know, people always will use like um, not having a know-how as as 
a deterrent to do something. Yeah. But like, if you really want to do something, you can just put what you you are on something. And that's what I did because eventually I don't know how to play it, but I know how to, I know how to play it in my style. In your way, innit? Yeah, yeah. So what did music do for you whilst you were inside then? I was extremely important, you know, I think, um, you know, we could get CDs from the library and stuff. And I think the prison officers and the powers that be know that music just calms people down and gives people time to think and so on and so forth. So that having access to music is extremely important. You know, it's, um, it's necessary. It does unbelievable things, you know, frequencies and stuff. That's it. If, if I didn't have music, I mean, I don't know, I wouldn't, I, but it would have been a hard hard ride, you know? No, and if I, I needed time out, just what you do, you put music on and chill, man. No, for real. Um, but you did music before, right? Well, <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, obviously you was part of the collective Bomb Squad before. Mm-hmm. Um, t- tell us a bit about that. Um, that's just where I'm from, you know. East London is like where uh, Graham started, you know. So, you know, all the people that people used to like, like worship, like thing that Roll Deep is just around Limehouse, the estate was around the corner from me and stuff. Yeah. Ross Squad, you know, was in Bow. I'm from Isle of Dogs, again, 10 minute, 10 minute drive, 15 minutes. That's the minute. cultural hub, in it, of, of Graham. That's, that's like where the, it is. E14, yeah. E3, that's where it started, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, Forest Gate, maybe a bit, you know, mm. D Double and that, you yeah, know. Yeah. So, um, so that's just what we did. I remember the first time I just came back from school and went to a youth club, which was a stone throw from my house, literally, and uh, where we used to have parties and stuff when he was in primary school. Um, and I went up there one day and, you know, Dizzy was in there. A couple of other men that was just from my, from my block was in there MC, and I thought, whoa, what is this? I think I was like 12. Yeah, yeah. And I went home, my brother was like, yeah, man, that's, that's the thing, isn't it? And I was like, okay, what, that's the thing? And I was like, yeah, he was like, and I just went home and tried to write lyrics. And then that was that, I've always been musical, so. What, what, was, what was life like at that time when you were like making that kind of music? What? Oh, it was turbulent. It was up and down, you know, the usual stuff, you know, um, um, disagreements with your neighboring areas and, you know, trying to, make money for oneself, you know, my mum is what works very hard, but we have, there was four kids and single parent most of the time. And I ended up leaving my mum to us when I was 14, on and off, and by the time I was 15, I was like completely out of there, living on my own, I had a flat with my friend. Oh, that's young, man. But yeah, it's mad, isn't it? And you know, that, I guess that's probably why it's taken me so hard, to, so long to come towards manhood, because I guess I lost uh, the essence of being a child and I just continue to act like a child for as long as I could and can. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was it was it was pretty tough, man. But you know, my favourite thing, my uh, term, terminology that one of the older boys, it was really naughty back in the day. Um, he just explains to me that we was all trauma bonding, we was all going through the same thing, and then you bond together. And you know, the powers that be would call that a gang, but. Us, we would just call it safety among numbers and a hub or somewhere. Yeah. You can look left and see someone that looks like you and talks like you and he that understands, understands what, you. what you're yeah. going through. Do you know what I mean? Do you say you go for runs? Yeah. Is this another little hobby? Yeah, well, gym is Love boxing, yeah. gym, all that stuff, you know, controlled aggression. The queen, yeah. No, I'm yeah. Just, <laughs> another outlet, you know? Of course. It's good. And control, an element of that gives you control. You know, out of, we used to think being out of control was the greatest thing ever. Yeah. I'm spontaneous, I'm this, I'm crazy, I'm this. Oh, he's a top, that's it's a joke thing. You need to be in control. Do you know what I mean? hundred percent. What, how, so how old were you, how old were you the first time you went to, to jail? Uh, six, 16 or 17, one of the two. Oh, what was that for? Uh, uh, drugs, um, robbery, and handling stolen goods. At that age? Yes, my brother, we were extremely Wait, active. how old, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> it's mad when you think about it, isn't it? Yeah, 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 definitely. No, but, yeah. No, I, but not, not, to, be... not to, like, pull you out, because obviously I, I grew up similar as well, so yes, I get it, so I'm just... Yeah, definitely, I was... I left the house, I had no guidance. Mm. Yeah, the guidance was people that were trying to, you know, make money off me or, or use me, because yeah. they could see I was forward. So, yeah... <sighs> That was the first time, and then the other time uh, was going on. Oh, no, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you. So, being that young, how did it feel going, you know, going through that experience, and then 
you know, a mindset of like, did it did it make you want to change or did, yeah. I don't know, did that, did that come into your head? I mean, I didn't like being told what to do. I didn't like not being able to move. I didn't like being mm. like a victim of, like a predatory victim. Like this first time I come in, you know, I was in South and Joe was all again. Yeah. And there were the wing was full of stuff with it. And then remember the boy like, what's your canteen? What's this? You know, the orange juice you get. You know, you have to give that to me in the morning, isn't it? <laughs> and this is Juve. So Juve is old school, you know what I mean? And I'm caught here as well. I'm like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, nah, mate. Nah, right? He's like, nah. And like, nah, mate. And then we ever, I remember the first day I came out and I sat in the wing and nothing happened. It's just yeah. a test, you know how it goes. Yeah. yeah. But then I came out, I remember I had a flat back there and I remember sitting in my flat. We had a party on the block and it was all lovely and adoring. So what, you did a few months, yeah? Yeah. What was it like coming out then from that experience? What yeah, was that like? we came out and, you know, there was a big old party and everyone had a good time. Like literally in the alley where I lived, like we just rammed it out of about 60 men and just had a party. And then I remember after when everyone left, I was like, after, and like this was not on the day, this was like a couple of days after I came out and I sat down and I sat in my flat, I looked around and I just started crying because I thought, uh, uh, I, don't have, I don't have hope in anything else. I have to literally go back to what I know. So what, what was it that made you cry? Like, what was it though? Ah, uh, because I felt hopeless. I felt like I've got no choice, you know, in where I was from and what I was doing. And I always knew I was smart, but like, I was like, I never had a job. I worked in cleaning cards for like two weeks to try and not go down. So I had a yeah. job and stuff, but I had no job. I don't, I don't, that's for me, everyone has got a choice. And for me, I've never been wanted to be told what to do. It's not me, the Jamaican in me or whatnot, but I'm not on it. And I, I always make my own path in whatever I do. Yeah. So I was just not on, I just didn't know what I was going to do. And I just kind of, my mum's a social worker and she always used to say that um, offenders always re-offend and go back generally within the first year. Yeah. So I remember, I know all this information in my head and I'm thinking like I'm a loser, I'm this, I'm going to go back. And But I thought I've got no choice. I can't be out here being a bum and stuff. How did you prefer, prepared for coming out though? What, did you have any preparation? No, just come out. And what was the feeling before you got out? Like, Oh... Uh, just couldn't wait to get out. So she was scratching the days off the wall. Do you know <laughs> I what I mean? mean? Literally just talking about <laughs> yeah. not doing that. But not as scratching. soon as you were yeah. like this, yeah. I, was like, I know what he's yeah, about I to knew say. Yeah, I going to say checking the dates. Yeah, he hates it. He's yeah. like just dashed the whole. No, I look at the re my release date once. It's gone. I hear you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I don't want to see it. I hear until you. I completely time. understand you know, that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, no, I understand I that. I couldn't do the calendar thing either. <laughs> <laughs> if I walked to the man's pad and I saw the calendar with the cross, I'm like, I'm walking out. Like, yeah. That's long, mate. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to lie, I did it for like a, oh, a couple months and then I realised what so to do. Um, yeah, I know. I'm disappointed <laughs> in myself. I'm not going to lie. Um, yeah, it's a bit soul destroying. So tell us about the, 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 the last time you went in. So how many times did you go in? Twice. Twice. So the second time you went in, is this when you picked up the guitar? Yeah. Okay. What was, what was uh, different this time, or what made you? I don't know. What? Yeah. What was different about this time? Uh, well, I got considerably longer time. You know. How uh, long did you get? So I got four and a half for for I'm robbery, but again, guilty plea, so I wasn't all right. Smart man, go guilty. Go guilty up. straight away. Up. Well, I did three days in the police cell over the weekend. I knew I weren't getting no bow. Do you know what I mean? I thought, I've had enough fish already. I might as well go guilty. Do you know what I mean? So, um, uh, <laughs> like, uh, I think I'd rather go jail than police cell no, for three it, days. It's long, innit? It's horrible. It's the did you count the towels? I did everything. <sighs> did everything. Are you, you sick and do. tired of being sick, sick and tired? tired. My Cody's talking about, yo, it's press up time, you know, brother. I'm like, bro, I don't want to do no press ups right now. I'm, I'm balling, you know, yeah, in the yeah, corner. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, Where did you um, end up that time? All right. So I went, so I went Feltham, then I went Lewis, yeah. then I went. Um, it was a while ago, so I'm glad you forgot. I'm glad. <laughs> That's good. There was one more prison I went to, but I can't remember what it cool. was. And then I went to Portland. Okay. Where I met, is, is Mystic here? Yeah, Mystic, you in the house. Ngumba. Come on, boy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. That's nice yeah, to have yeah, a like, friend there. That's cold. So, um, yeah. I remember and, his name as well. That's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, I still hang about with loads of my prison mates. Loads and loads oh, and loads cool, of them. We're still, we're going on holiday together. We do everything together still. Prison's a different connection, isn't it? It's like being, I, I said it's like being in a huge youth club all the time. 
So some but beats, you can't go home, but you can't yeah, go yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But some beats are like, like best time of your life. Yeah, in the mm. weirdest way possible. Yeah, no, it's true. I, I, we Very get true. it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like belly laughs. Yeah. It's 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 <laughs> crying, it's, laughed, yeah. I've laughed. I'm it's like, crazy to think like if people ask, do you miss anything? And sometimes there are memories that you know you've made. There's moments. And in it. yeah, and sometimes it makes you feel that super whole and mm -hmm. at one and mm -hmm. good. So yeah, I mean there are times. Um, times in it, there's ups and downs <laughs> like in most things, but yeah. I guess they're, they're very extreme in there. So but, was there was there something different about this sentence, or you know? Yeah, there was. My best friend died when I was in jail, um, and we sorry wasn't talking. To hear, yeah, sorry man. To hear. Yeah, we wasn't talking obviously over the over money, and um, yeah, that was like that was that was the only thing, you know. As we wasn't talking, and he died, and I know he would have came and visited me if he was talking, but then. When I come out and like look at MySpace and things like that on Facebook, looking for our pictures, I saw this like two years ago when I was mm. looking, and me and a couple of boys was in jail, and he was writing on there like free hack, free that, and you know he probably wasn't talking. He was still screaming free. You Do like, you know yeah, what I mean? Still so, cared. Yeah, yeah, that was. I guess that was a kind of that was probably the thing really uh, that one. And I just thought, oh, uh, I just thought oh, I can't do this again. It's too much time wasting. Yeah, so. Yeah, that was probably the that was probably the thing, and I was a bit older as well. I just couldn't believe. Sometimes you go crazy and you think, "No, I must can bust this door, you know. There must be a way." <laughs> I can get that. Out. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's yeah, and it's, oh. yeah. So not again. So. How how old were you during that time? I came out when I was twenty two. So uh, as a twenty two year old, what, where's your um? Like, where's your mentality at? You know, you've just got out, done a little sentence. Well, not a little sentence. It's a considerable amount of time being that but age. It was also before that as well, you know, having, yeah. having that other sentence. It's mm. quite a long period of time. Yeah. So what does that what does that do for your mentality when you when you get out? What are you thinking? What's it your mind? You, it reminds you about humbleness, you know. When I went back, my brother just got a flat, you know. He had a, not the best so far. The television was on the floor. There weren't no furniture in there. I know them setups. You know them yeah, setups. Yeah, we know. Yeah. We, you know as well. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, been there. We've been you know, and it weren't one of them new. It weren't no flat screen. I feel like even my TV. Yeah, the big back. Yeah, the big back. Yeah. <laughs> and the old school free view box. You know, and I was yeah, like, yeah. yeah, and I was like, yeah. At least I'm home. You know, yeah. my brother just put a sofa. I mean, a duvet and a pillow down. Cut the boys is there, you know. And I was like, yeah, man, I'm there. Yeah. Back in, back with my friend. What my mum made me dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Simple thing, you know. What was the mission then? What was the, what was your aims? Your Just objective? to be better. Just to be better. Even if it was in things that wasn't the best thing. Just to be better. And prison really taught me how to just, I didn't sell a share, share a cell. I never shared a cell. I always said, no, I can't do it. Single bang up. Yeah, yeah. But don't that, don't that, like, I was talking to someone the other day, I can't remember who, that was I talking to you? And I was like, do you ever, like, talk to yourself? Some, was I talking to you? I was, innit? <laughs> I was like, you know when you do single bang up, you end up talking to yourself a bit. Do you end up, do you still do I'm that? I'm talking now? to myself before I just bang up. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that was fine, you know? Nah, hey. when, so when you came out, um, did you play music straight away? I did more. Just music the guitar. vibes. No, no, I didn't see a guitar. I didn't even look at a guitar for years. Really? For about six years. So five what, years. Why? And did you not think about life it? Life is fast, man. Yeah, I yeah. I don't even have time for that. I'm just time to just get back out there, see my friends, and see what's going on. Uh, figure out, evaluate how far behind I am, and yeah, to play catch up and see my family. Playing catch up. What what was that? What was that? What was that like? That for and and I mean, do you know what? And yeah. how long did that last for? Yeah, um, I didn't. I didn't. I, it wasn't too crazy. I didn't have to do anything too out of the ordinary, you know. Um, but it's a mentality thing. It's a mentality that you have to grow out of, you know. Yeah. Like, why do I care what another person thinks or says or feels about me when I know exactly? Who I am. My mindset is expensive. If I, if you had the same mindset as me, then you know maybe you'd be somewhere now. Do you know? No, I hear that. But I think that comes with maturity, innit? It of comes course. with growing up and. Well, I always knew I was going to do Shank. I never. I just knew, knew from from day 
that I was going to do something. My mummy told me. My mum nearly lost me when she was in Jamaica. She crashed on a m motorbike when she was pregnant. And she said she just lay there waiting for the miscarriage. And wow. um, she said after like half hour, it didn't happen. So she walked home and went to bed feeling that she would have woke up with, you know, that situation. Miracle baby. That's what she says. You heard it here <laughs> first. <laughs> Windrush Th baby. That's bro. powerful. Windrush <laughs> baby. Yeah. That's powers, man. So when did you decide to pick up the guitar again? When? Did, what it's made like 2000 you? 2016. After the stripper Tommy shook my life out, man. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I remember you saying that. What, yeah, yeah. What, so yeah, what, what? Talk us through. Yeah. It, yeah. What, what happened? Um, I was. She told me to do it, so I did, and I bought it. And then there was a tune that I was listening to, but. Like an indie group called a uh, indie group called Daughter, and they had a tune called Youth, and it, like it just really burnt, set my spirit on fire. It was so true and so serene and so simple. And I said, I'm going to teach myself how to play that. So I went on YouTube and taught myself how to play it. And then like, there was like the style that they play, like finger picking. And I said, okay, I can do that. I'm going to adopt that, and I'm just going to try and do some stuff. So then I just came literally obsessed with it, more obsessed than I've been with any woman or anything. And uh, I That's just, the passion, isn't it? Yeah, it's that real passion, man. I felt like this thing I could do something. I've always been really good with words, so as soon as I like started to create like my own little melodies with a guitar, I'd just get drunk and play and, and just write about how I feel and it just kind of put itself together. Like obviously you're doing well, like you're on Radio 6 music, Radio 1 and 2. Um, what does that feel like coming from, like coming to this point where you are now, looking back from where it was back then? Do you know what, brother? I never wish for like big things, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, I'm just happy that I'm able to do things and people can, yeah. young lads can see me, young girls can see me from where I'm from and see, you know what? He sounds like me, acts like me, moves like me, don't give him monkeys, do you know what I mean? Um, so I just kind of, I've got, I just, I was running from, I'm always running from responsibility, but like now I'm just trying to take on that responsibility that I represent some, uh, 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 working class people, a genre of people. And um, yeah, I'm just trying to hold that really, man. I don't really care about, obviously the accolades definitely help with just, mm. just uh, I think how things are set up. But that's not what I care about. I care about my friends and my family. Um, I care about representing them, you know, so they can see me as like some kind of beacon of hope and respect. And that's not enough for me, brother. I'm not really... Doesn't that add pressure to you? Yeah, the huge pressure that I don't even want. But like I have to deal with it, you know. I have to deal with it. I'm even now, like I'm talking to my manager that like, finally really ready to like go on a journey and go in and seek some, have some therapy and like improve my mindset and offload things that I've been carrying for years. Mm. So I can kind of be free and born again, unload all those childhood, teenage, adult, pre-adult traumas and, and move on. No, I hear you, man. Did you, you know, when it, when it comes to um, like your journey of music, was there ever like a point where you like became a student or you were studying or you was learning different things? Were there any? No, not really. But I, again, that's just, I, I, I'm like, I used to be in a choir at one point as well. So like, okay. I have, like, I have information in my brain. Little Birdie told me something about Skepta. He was on a course with Skepta. Oh something. yeah. Oh, the course. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, um. Again, I'm just writing. That's research, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? We do our jobs well. Over yes, here, brother. I mean, I mean, I, I did a course, again, when I picked up the guitar and I was just riding around doing what I'm doing and on the radio I heard about this course on Capital Extra. So I applied for it and I got on that and I did it for a few weeks. It was cool, whatever. Didn't really do much, but I still was stepping the thing, learned there was amongst other musicians, different world. And then I met a lady on there called Nell uh, Jordan Jen, a wonderful lady, and uh, she really believed in the stuff that I was doing, the songs that I was writing, and she's from Hackney, so we had that East London that connection, connected, yeah, connected connection. Sorry, 
and uh, she told me about that Levi Skepta course, and I was like, I'm thinking they ain't gonna work for me. <laughs> like, no way. And uh, so I just carried on going about my business. And I remember the day before the prescriptions had to be handed in, she was like, have you sent in your thing with a video of you singing? I'm like, no, no, I'm 26. The cutoff age is 25. She went, how old are you? I said, I'm 26 now. She went, how old are you? <laughs> I'm 25. I'm 25 now. <laughs> <laughs> and so she went, go home yeah. and send what I told you to send. So I sent it in. The next day she called me, she went, were well, you on the course? <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I, I don't know. Oh, nice. And uh, yes, yeah, so I did that course. And again, like, I must talk about like the mind frames of like trying to destroy yourself because that's not because that's what you know. Yeah, and self sabotage. Self sabotage is the key. So I turn up there, blinding drunk, like stoned, this that. But the people on the course really pushed us, man. And even Skeppy himself was actually there quite a lot. Not every, not all the time. It was every Saturday as well, which was difficult. Mm. But um, after a Friday night and that, you know yeah, what I'm saying, you. my brother. So. <laughs> But I persevered, I got through it, and um, you know, played my song that I was trying to release, and you know, I did it, and then I released my song um, like a couple of weeks after I completed the course, and we played at the V&A Museum, and it Ooh, was that's wonderful. Dope. That's you know, dope. Yeah, it was wonderful, man. And um, yeah, then I put my tune out, and then I linked Skip, and he was really nice because I, I knew people through like Graham, we knew the same people. And he was cool, man. Um, he really backed us, you know, shared my tune when it came out and really helped us. I used to hang out, come to one of my shows, I could hang out stopped, in his man. house. Yeah, that's wicked. And if I see him now, he still helps me. So, God, so yeah, man, that was wicked. Well done, that's wicked. Isn't it? Yeah, it was wicked, man. I'm 25. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> I was going to ask you what kind of was there any changes that you you had to make to live the life that you live now compared to you know how you, such a change from when you were younger yeah you have to get used to just i mean prison help but you got used to be, being alone you got to be used to doing your own thing mm. you got to be used to even being ridiculed to a certain extent sometimes you know people just don't think what are you doing that's not what we're supposed to be doing yeah but then i realized that that's 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 their frame of mind and that's that's uh, sad for them. Really. But I bet most of them now say they're proud of you though. Of innit? course they do. Yeah. No, but again, that's good. Cycles. Mm -hmm. uh, so what response do you get from like the guys that you were in jail with, like the ones that you still speak to? What what, what response do you get? But they've just been on they've been with me along the way, innit? They're like they was like my biggest supporters really, because they see me with the guitar in my soul, you know. So they like um they support me vehemently, full heartedly. What um, do you think they'll say about you? Like, what it was like being on the wing with you? I was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I was hilarious. You know, we've got my boy, my boy's here today. Mystic. Where's Mystic? Mystic, you here? Mystic, was I not the guy? What was, what was Hack like on the wing? What was it like <laughs> being on the wing with him? No, no, Hack, Hack was a funny brother, man. <laughs> Hack, always had a smile on his face, always laughing. Was, even though he was in jail, he was made like we were having, we were having fun on the wing, regardless where it was. So yeah, he's a good brother. Always playing the guitar. As a girl too, about bomb squad still. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, there's always love, man. You I'm had the CD, you the yeah. It's like, yo, I swear you was. I was like, I had what? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's him with the CD. That's Ted. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's he had him, the CD. Yeah. I remember. I remember that like yesterday. Oh. No, that's jokes. What jail was that? What jail was that? Portland. Portland. Oh, that's by the sea, man. <sighs> Yes, Seagulls are vicious, bro. Yeah. <laughs> when you was inside playing the guitar, did you see yourself doing this right now? No, but I'm full, I don't look too far in the future. That's one thing I don't do. I just, I just try and just have it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Why do you feel like it is so important to share your story through your music? Um, because, uh, you know, I'm coming from a uh, working class boy black boy view uh, where we're not really encouraged enough to like be emotional or share our feelings we're encouraged more so to just be tough and strong yeah. and you know be providers and whatnot but you know there's other ways we can be providers so 
you know, like I'm not a pushover, you know, but so but I don't give the pretense that I would be, but I'm also very emotional. I'm always willing to lend a helping hand to somebody, shoulder to cry on or someone to cry with. So uh, I just try and encourage that because it's good for us. Mm. Um, so I'm just trying to get into grips with being myself to the most ultimate form. So this is just a part of it. And this is the road that I've taken really. Never would I thought I would be in rooms and have like grown men crying because I'm talking about what they're talking about or talking about what they want to talk about. Yeah. So, you know, it's been 10 plus years now since you've been out of jail, mm -hmm. right? Um, how does it feel to look back on your journey um, <coughs> of where you've been and where you are now? Just what's supposed to have happened. It's not like some existential crazy thing. It's just if you take life by the reins and try and do things that you know you're supposed to do, not the things that you're not supposed to do. You're supposed to reach for the stars. You're supposed to live life to the highest echelon. You're not supposed to stay in the same place. It's only the Babylon then that's put the borders mm. on this place. That's not how it was. We migrate, we move. So if you stay still, you will stay still. If you move, you will get places. So you have to move. Keeping it moving, Keeping progress. Love that. In it. Thank you for sharing that because it's true. Thank you, no worries. Um, so what we like to do on Life After Prison is give some organizations that can really help you when you're released from prison. Um, so first organization we want to shout out is Irene Taylor Trust. They deliver creative music projects which focus on the creation of um, new and innovative music. They aim to raise the self-confidence and aspirations of men, women and young people in prisons and those in the community who may be at risk of coming into contact with the criminal justice system. Yeah, big up Irene Taylor Trust. Um, there's also Finding Rhythms who deliver collaborative music courses um, for people that are deemed at risk of reoffending in prison and the community. Um, they utilize industry professionals to empower people to change their lives. Um, and you can find uh, Irene Taylor Trust and Finding Rhythms on our website and in our show notes, so check them out. We've also got another show called Getting Out, um, where we give advice, information and guidance um, for people that are newly released from prison. And we've got an episode that features Lady Unchained. Lady Unchained? Cool. Where we talk about, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where we talk about how to rebuild your confidence. Um, and we've got like some great advice from Lady Unchained and other people in our podcast network. So check that out too. So we have some questions submitted that we're going to answer now. First question is from Amy. Have we got Amy? Is Amy in the house? Oh yeah, wicked. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Hi guys. Oh, excellent. Wow. Sorry, thanks so much. I'm a massive, Ooh. massive fan of the pod. Um, I'm really struck by the openness um, from all, th all three of you. And not that many people uh, are able to talk about having been inside and to be as open um, as you've been. Uh, how did you get make the decision to be uh, open like you are? And have you ever regretted it? I've always been open. Um I feel like there's a level of openness that I've come to, like there's places that I won't discuss, but mo most things I'm just, just open. So where's this? I've been open. I'm, I shared my life with my friends for over 20 years. And as I said, we've been poor together. No, when I moved out and I got my first flat off the, I'm talking old school days where you used to go and live in hostels on your own, you know, like yeah. Kings Cross, Cartwright Gardens. Yeah, and, yeah. My friends would, you know, get on the bus with me and make sure that I don't sleep on my own in those hostels. You understand what I'm saying? And then when I got my flat, my bed set, you know, the window was broken and this, the heating didn't work and this, that. And, you know, there'll be like six, seven lads on the bed sharing one duvet with a halogen heater that's going, <laughs> <laughs> you know them heater, don't Yeah, it? yeah. And when, <laughs> and when the heater's not on you, you're freezing. But then no one wanted to go anywhere. They just wanted to make sure we're all together. So we've always been, oh, that's that's just how we've been. We share everything, even our pains. But I feel like sharing that helps as well. Oh, yeah. So like, even, load, isn't yeah, it? even what we're doing on Life After Prison, you know, kind of sharing our experiences. 
um, it kind of allows others to. It allows to uh, allows people to see another side because you mm. know, like you read in the newspapers or the headlines or the news, oh, lags in jail or this person's on that. But there's another side to the story. Do you know what I'm saying? And um, being a face of life after prison or being in part of life after prison, it's not a problem. It's good. It's great. Like it's it's needed. Otherwise, you know, we wouldn't have the responses that we have. We wouldn't have the connection with the people that that watch it. Um, so yeah, I feel like being open is something that needed to happen and glad to be a part of it. You know what I'm saying? Um, f thank you for your question, Amy, appreciate that. Um, Myra. I'm a big fan, I've been watching you from the beginning. Oh. And so my question was, how do you feel that um, doing these podcasts has changed you as people? It's changed me massively because I can speak about it and I didn't. Um, and that's just mainly because I don't know, I, I didn't know loads of people that went, I didn't know many people that have been to jail, especially uh, women. Um, <clears throat> and there's not really anywhere to talk about it. So this gave me a platform to be able to. So that came like naturally with it and changed me because, you know, it's, it's helped me and it's helping other people. And I realized that people do just need to speak about things sometimes and relate. So, it's made me think that it's it's helped me think that you know this can really help other people and that matters most to me um that if it is and if it is then yeah that's that's nice that's <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that question no appreciate that I don't know who this is from. What advice do you have for anyone trying to find their creative voice? Ooh. Listen to yourself to find the answers. Don't look for someone else to be your idol. Don't praise anybody else. Praise yourself. Mm. Then you find all the answers there. I like that. Mm. Thanks for that question, Anonymous. Yeah. <laughs> that was good still. That was good. <laughs> uh, is, we got time to stop? Okay. Uh, Kwame? Yeah. Kwame. Sorry. Power name. That's, that's, that's the Ashanti name there. Mm. Mm. Uh, let me think. I had a question, but I'm going to change it. Um, there's a quote that goes, a person who moves mountains begins by carrying away small stones. Ooh. What were your small stones? Ooh. Um, I had to deface myself. I had to look at myself in the mirror. I had to like try and... Uh, eradicate certain levels of ego and vanity. Um, I had to, I'm trying to, uh, uh, and now as you know, Kwame, it's just, um, take, taking the right steps to help me help myself. Um, so that's what I'm continuing to do, I guess. It's so much easier to take the burden of somebody else's and help them, but when do people really take the time to take the burden I should bestowed upon themselves and help themselves? And I guess that's what the journey I'm at now. My cousin's there, she's looking at me like she's proud. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Thanks for that, Kwame. That was, that was power, man. Um, yeah, and thank you, everybody, for all your questions um they've been incredible and yeah uh put me on the spot a little bit yeah. <laughs> um which is good really really good um so we've now got a performance a live <laughs> performance yeah, yeah. so um, um yeah. yeah hack you wanna go set up yeah 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 go do your thing my brother um so yeah like this is our first live show and for everybody watching please drop a comment um in the comment section, let us know who you think we should have on as our next live guest. And those in the audience, you can let us know afterwards as well, please. So make sure you hit up, hit us up in the comments. Um, and we always love for you guys to get in touch with us, you know. You can do this by getting in the DMs um, on Instagram and Twitter at After Prison Pod. Or if you prefer to send an email, you can email us at podcast at prison.radio. If you prefer to send a letter, you can write to us at Life After Prison, National Prison Radio, HMP Brixton, London, SW25XF. Or 
um, you can actually drop us a voice note on our website, lifeafterprisonpod.com. All right. Are you guys ready? Ooh, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> All right, guys, give it up for Hack Baker. Kind of short feet, yeah, stuck in a backward gear And I need a little axe of life, yeah To scare among us, yeah And from among us, yeah Families from left to right Got a finger here next to my index bear And I use it just to speak me mind, yo I'm just a wind rust, baby No time for complaining Just meet me on the street at night what do you need I like my cigars with a bit of heavenly I like the dance I like the cheer have a laugh and persevere just meet me on the streets at night I'm just doing rust baby with little bits of crazy alive just to have a good time Whatever you need, facilitate it. Whatever your stimulations, no need to think twice or hard. I'm just doing rush, baby. With little bits of crazy, alive just to have a good time, yo. Whatever you need, facilitate it. Whatever your stimulations, no need to think twice or hard. Seventeen. Mummy came over from the Caribbean. What a bean, yo She went in adversity Face of adversity But hit the shabeen just to ease the time You know what I mean, yeah, yo Now the love is gone from the street Can he not see it? Just leave it to the wind rush, baby It's time we reclaim it So meet me on the streets at night Ay, ay, ay I'm just doing rush, baby, with little bits of crazy, alive just to have a good time. Whatever you need, facilitate it, whatever your stimulations, no need to think twice so hard. I'm just doing rush, baby, with little bits of crazy, alive just to have a good time. Whatever you need for facilitate it, whatever your simulations, no need to think twice so hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So big thanks to Hack Baker. Thank you for being here, taking time out and that lovely performance, my guy. Uh, thank you to our studio audience. You guys have been amazing. Make some noise one more time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. 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 Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. I've got a show. I'm going on tour in September yeah. as well. Oh, so yes. like, yeah. when I come around and I've got an album coming out in like three weeks as well. So have a little look out for it. Listen, well. all the hacks details are in the show notes. Yeah. Check them out. Click that. All Thank of that. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Easy. All right, sweet man. We'll see you next time. Woo!